Good morning, everybody. I am back. I took a little bit of a break because I had a baby. I'm happy to report everything is going really well. I'm doing healthy, baby's healthy, everything's great. But I'm also super, super excited to give you guys my first spring garden tour of 2023. Lots to show you. I am so happy I did some work before having the baby. So when I came back from the hospital uh, and since then, I've just been watching the garden grow. Lots to show you. Let's get started. Might be kind of hard to see, but I'll do some uh, close-up shots. This is our no-dig, no-till garden that we have just added as of like, I don't even know, like two months ago. Uh, we did a really, really heavy layer of mulch utilizing a free service called Chip Drop. See if it's in your area. Once that kind of suffocated the weeds, we uh, utilized cardboard, like a lasagna method, and put layers of compost over the top. I do have a video on that process, on how we did that. If you want to check that out, I'll link it as well. We have some cucumbers growing, the bushing variety. I've never grown a bushing variety of cucumber. I'm interested to see what that's going to look like. I, from my understanding, they kind of grow up a little bit more and need to be trellised a little bit, but not like these uh, varieties that kind of go everywhere. Then I also have some butternut squash right behind me. I have a gray zucchini. We have a yellow crooked deck zucchini. Uh, some pumpkins, the sweet sugar pie pumpkins on that side. I have water watermelons at the back. Dixie Queen watermelons, I believe that that's the variety I'm using. I also have cantaloupes too. I think that's everything. It's all growing pretty well. I'm having some issues with getting like an even amount of water over here. Things that are closest to the water uh, area are doing awesome and the things that are not are really small as you'll see. So I'll walk through and you'll see that it's kind of goes from like uh, small to big basically. Right here I have my gray zucchini that are doing really well. I tried this last year, it didn't do very good, but the leaves are massive, bigger than my hand, and everything is just starting to double and triple in size basically like every single day. We do have some little uh, flowers that are starting to form on the gray zucchini and uh, some of the fruits that are starting to form, so I'm seeing male and female flowers on here. This bed has the red turnips in it, which are like growing faster than anything in my whole garden. It's crazy. And I also have the Uzbek golden carrots in here, which germinated really quickly. I'm not used to carrots germinating that fast. They usually take anywhere between like 14, 21 days. And I feel like they germinated within a week. I could be wrong because a lot was going on at that time. I was preparing to have a baby, uh, but they're doing awesome. I also have the San Marzano uh, tomatoes at the back because I'm just trying to fit in as many tomato plants as I can in different areas. So I like to kind of put the tomato plants at the back of beds so they can just kind of go upwards. The bed behind me is uh, some black beans also with San Marzano's at the back too. Tomato plants. I love this bed because it doesn't give me any issues. The oregano that we have growing back here has just been growing so strong and amazing for years. I'm planting Thai basil in here. I'm also going to plant some regular like Italian basil in here and a different variety like a lettuce leaf basil. It'll kind of be like our herb garden. We also have a cattle panel trellis going from big bed to big bed. On the edge I've planted these, I don't know if you can see them, I've planted my pineapple tomatoes. So I'm gonna utilize like the very edge, plant up, hopefully we'll have some pineapple tomatoes and lots of herbs in the middle part. Here is my dill. I don't know if you can see this little caterpillar on it. My dill has gotten as tall as me. It's gone to seed in various different parts of it. The reason why I just don't have the heart to pull it yet is because there's little creatures such as this caterpillar and pollinators that absolutely love, love, love dill. In this bed I have my muncher cucumbers. They're growing really, really fast, which is awesome. I've got some flowers on there, which hopefully means that we'll have some cucumbers 
here to come pretty soon. Also have my Detroit red beets in here, which are successfully growing. Last year I had an awful time growing beets. You just never know what year is gonna be your year. The awesome part about growing beets is that it's not just about the roots, also a great way to utilize their leaves. You can eat their leaves, cut them off, saute them, and also take advantage of those really great health benefits. We have our brassicas here. By about like two o'clock or so, this bed starts to get shade, so it gets a little bit of a relief from the heat. And historically in this bed, my kale has always done super, super well. So this is the other side of the herb garden that I just showed you guys. It's another really big uh, raised bed. This one I think is like about 12 feet long. I call this bed like our heart bed because it was the first bed that we built out here. It kind of started everything thing and it's massive it's kind of like in the heart of the garden I have another cattle panel trellis on this side too there are pineapple tomatoes on this side as well because everybody had suggested that they are really awesome tomatoes to grow so I just kind of did a whole cattle panel full of pineapple uh, tomatoes this side is doing a lot better than the other side it's getting more Sun more water all that but hopefully once things start raining more the other side will catch up a little bit. What I'm also really excited about is the success I'm having with my Swiss chard right now. Last year, again, I don't know why, I just had a really hard time growing Swiss chard. I think by the time I was attempting to grow it, it was like July, it was super hot, things weren't germinating. Sometimes, some seasons it works out, and others it doesn't. You can, again with Swiss chard, make salads out of it, chop it up, throw it into just about anything, saute it. It's a superfood. There's all different types of vitamins and nutrients in it that is scientifically proven to make you happier. I have the long white zucchini and I grew this before, I believe it was last year, it was really successful in the beginning of spring, just like all of my squash, but as the temperatures start to heat up, they kind of fizzle out. Really cool looking uh, vegetable once it started to grow out. It's like an ancient variety from Baker Creek that I got. On this side of the bed I have my celery. I have the pink Chinese celery and I also have the Utah variety as well. My mom has told me that I am planting all of the celery way too close, which might be the case. I've never really grown celery successfully, so it's kind of like a new thing to me. I'm gonna try to blanch them to keep them nice and tight, meaning that you kind of like wrap them with cardboard and a string. They're really, really happy here. This bed gets a lot of full sun and a lot of moisture. They like to grow in like a marshy type of environment, like a swampy type environment. I've heard that when you grow celery from seed, it is the best tasting celery. It's nothing like the store-bought stuff. Right here, I have my Black Beauty tomatoes going up the other side of the cattle panel trellis. I've never grown this variety either. I think it's like a newer variety and the tomatoes are supposed to be black, which looks really cool. I have my tomatillos in this bed. I've been referring to this bed as my salsa bed because I'm also planting cilantro in the middle. Tomatillos just grow really, really quickly for me for some reason. I'm sure maybe for everybody else, I don't know. They're already flowering a lot and they are definitely ready to be trellised as well to get some support. This year I'm gonna grow more things in pots. I'm growing the spoon tomatoes in a pot this year. Last year I grew them in one of the big beds on a trellis and there's like a thousand little tiny pea-sized tomatoes everywhere that go to seed so it kind of becomes a mess. If you do have spoon tomatoes I do suggest growing them in pots after my experience last year. It wasn't like a nightmare but uh, it definitely would have been easier for harvesting and all of that to like get all around because they produce so many teensy tiny little tomatoes. So here are my spoon tomatoes. They're doing really well. They've got kind of like a different type of leaf pattern, really small, uh, but I do love growing these. It's a favorite for my son. I'm also growing the Cherokee purple tomatoes in a pot right here. I'll be growing uh, 12 bags of potatoes as well over there. Tomatoes, potatoes, try not to mix them up. I'm gonna show you what those bags look like. It's gonna be my first time growing potatoes. My husband's like, why aren't we growing potatoes? Come on. So that's what we're doing. I got some bags from Amazon. I'll link them below. I'm gonna just shove a whole bunch of potatoes in there that I have chitted 
I believe that's how you say it. I'll put it right here. Hopefully I'm not saying it wrong. And I'm just gonna cut them up, toss them in there, let y'all know how it goes. All of my like side beds are um, either like tomatillos, eggplants, and uh, tomatoes all along the side. I'm also going to put some more herbs in those beds, like in the middle of them, and different things like uh, spinach, uh, just to kind of fill them up, not waste any space. Just things that don't need a whole lot of uh, sun and space, just like kind of some filler stuff. In this bed, I have the tomato, the tomato brandy wine. I also have sugar rush peach peppers. I have Tabasco peppers, black beauty peppers, and banana peppers. All of my other peppers are going to go in uh, this part of the bed once we get the rows in there. We just haven't collected enough cardboard yet, or I just haven't been able to go out to a store and just say, hey, can I have your cardboard? Just haven't had time with the newborn and everything. Um, but right now that's, we're kind of doing a little bit of fun peppers in this bed. It gets really, really full sun. It gets like eight hours or it gets like at least 10 hours of sun a day, which worries me a little bit because peppers don't need like extreme, extreme heat and sun. They actually do a little bit better with sometimes a little bit of, of a break from the sun and the heat. My green stock strawberries don't seem like a lot right now because anytime there is a ripe strawberry, my son, you know, picks and eats them, which is fine. That's kind of like my way to get him out to the garden. I'll go, hey, let's go pick some strawberries and everything. And he gets really excited and comes out here. But I need to get a little bit more water to these and fertilize them, uh, but I love growing strawberries and the green stock. Behind me are my uh, grow boxes which grow things really really quickly because there is like a water basin at the bottom so the plants have continual access to water and everything I've grown in that has literally like like I said, grown twice as fast. They're called grow boxes. It's pretty amazing how quickly they grow. So if you're somebody who has like a balcony garden or a, like a small space, I would definitely recommend green stalks and these grow boxes as well. In this bed, I have three heads of cabbage. About two weeks ago, we harvested a whole head of cabbage for St. Patrick's Day. We made corned beef and cabbage. I know that this is, you know, purple cabbage, but it didn't taste any different than like your standard kind of like white green cabbage. And uh, it was really delicious. Awesome to, you know, cut up something that substantial and use it in a dish at your house. Uh, in the back, I have some of the black coat runner beans which have started to produce flowers already. And then I also have some spinach in this area right here, as well as some China Jade cucumbers to trellis up the back. Uh, so things are going upwards, sideways. We're utilizing this middle area. You can do a lot with a small raised garden bed. Then over here I have my uh, pak choy cabbage, which is growing. And we have the parsnip hollow crown and uh, purple sprouting broccoli. So I'm doing a little bit over here, some right here, and utilizing this big space for the uh, purple sprouting broccoli. And then on the side area, because I, I like to grow upwards and outwards, I'm growing the red noodle beans, uh, trellising to the side so that we can maximize the amount of space in each of these beds. In this bed, I have a whole side with cattle panel trellises. Both sides have cattle panel trellises. Instead of it being arched, they're actually just kind of like walls. And I do have a video on how to do, how to make cattle panel arch trellises and how to make the walls. So I'll link those. On this wall, it's full of San Marzano Roma tomatoes. On this wall, it's a variety. I've got um, the Martinez Roma tomatoes. I have, uh, I forgot, like Grap Grapilio Roma tomato. I'll have to look it up and I'll, I'll put it in there. But I also have the mushroom basket tomatoes and uh, a sweetie cherry tomatoes and another variety. I can't even think of it. Uh, so this whole side's gonna be kind of like just a bunch of different things. In the middle, I have my uh, garlic growing. I planted this back in October. I'll put a video on how to, I'll put a link to a video on how to grow garlic. It's 
way easier than I ever thought. Everything is growing really successfully. I think it's about 150 heads of garlic, if I can remember correctly. In about July, I can harvest the garlic and have a whole bunch of garlic to use, dry up, to um, chip, and have fresh for the year. So next year, now that I know how easy it is to grow garlic, which I did this with store-bought garlic, um, I'm going to do double the amount because it's just so crazy easy. And I wanted to give you guys just like a really quick like personal life update. I'm sure some of you are interested, some of you might not be, so you can skip over if uh, you're not. So I did have the baby on March 15th. It was an amazing experience. It was my VBAC baby. So I did successfully have a VBAC, which means a vaginal birth after a c-section my first baby was a c-section and just the whole experience could not have been better it was so healing and therapeutic and i just am like still on a high from it basically so the baby is super healthy her name is camille and we're just loving having her in the family everything went really well um, now I'm back in the garden feeling a little bit more like myself. Tomorrow I'll be three weeks uh, post tomorrow will be three weeks uh, that she has been earthside. I was 41 weeks when I had her exactly so I was definitely ready to get the baby out. I feel like all of this garden work, uh, sowing the seeds and everything like that really helped with keeping my body uh, going physically, squatting, and doing all this different type of stuff. Um, but still, she came a little bit late, and that's fine. So I'm gonna make a whole video on my birth experience. I'm not gonna get into all that right now because I know not everybody is here for that, uh, but I will be posting that very soon. So that's everything, I believe. I hope I included everything. If not, I'll include it in like, the next garden tour that I have. And the reason why I really wanna document these like weekly kind of garden tours or semi-weekly garden tours is because I want to see how quickly these things are growing. It's hard to kind of realize exactly uh, how fast they're growing unless you've documented it. So um, it'll be super cool to see at the end of the season, just like week by week, how fast everything has um, come together. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch my garden tour video. If you guys have any questions, please be sure to drop them in the comment section below. Bye.